going to take us right back. They're going to take us right into our next topic, man. Give me your 10 bro. wrestlers of all time, bro. <laughs> all right. You I'm can gonna, name 10 you, people gonna, better than Hulk Hogan? Oh, nah. We going bro. right into the next topic. Right into the next topic. <laughs> You want me to go first? You want me to go first? No, I go first. I go first real quick. All right, so my ten people. I'm gonna go my number ten. My my first number ten. My number ten is uh, Undertaker. Undertaker is your ten. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going in no type of. You know, what I mean, I'm just naming all ten guys that I feel. Now, all time, oh, so you ain't going. You ain't going in. You ain't going in a certain order. Nah, nah, I'm not going in a certain order. All right, my number ten person is uh is Edge. Edge is my number Edge, ten okay. wrestler, the most held the most titles ever in the history of wrestling. Thirty two. I think he held 32 titles, not 32 titles, but he held it 32 times. I think that's the highest, even higher than Ric Flair, I believe. Ric Flair's 16 time world champion. I think Edge is Edge 32 times. Is that combining all the titles he have held all These around all the, the world, titles. or is it just... which one are you talking or about? Or is that just? Is that, or is that just the titles of WWE? Because if we're talking about WWE, then it's only eleven titles that he's held in WWE. Well, no, no Edge, no Edge, uh, Edge, Edge, uh, mostly was in WWE. Mostly, mm-hmm. I think he. I think, in fact, I think he was always, always in WWE. I don't think he went anywhere else. Um, but he would be. No, he had. He had he had a stint in Canada. He had a um he had a brief a brief stint in Canada for for a short minute and then that was it. Um I think that's how they discovered him anyway. But uh but yeah, um that's a good pick. Now I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you I'm so I'm gonna give you an honorable mention with that one. Um Okay. And then you can give me the next one. But my honorable mention would be Goldberg. And the only reason why I Goldberg? chose... Yeah, Goldberg is my honorable mention. He would be number 11 to me. The only reason why mm-hmm. I chose chose Goldberg, I mean Edge over Goldberg, is because Edge didn't have in his contract that he couldn't lose a match. I think that was corny that Goldberg did that. You know what I'm saying? I think it was corny that he had in his contract he couldn't lose. I don't know why that was a thing. Well, but. well, well. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the backstory behind that, right? So, all right. So Goldberg, when he first came into WCW, right? Yeah. Goldberg, Goldberg. Basically, they knew Goldberg's weak weaknesses, and they know his strengths. His strengths, of course, he he was super super strong. You know what I'm saying? This guy, this guy, uh, jackhammered the giant, aka Big Show. Yeah. For for. And he had and he had him up there for a very long time too to be that big and do that. Yeah. So we they had a strong point. They knew um that uh his strongs and his weaknesses. So the idea was, you know what I mean, to pr- to play upon his strengths. He didn't if you if you notice most of Goldberg's masses were like three to five minutes. <clears throat> if they went over that time limit you notice most of the time the people that he's around or the person that he's wrestling will carry that match for some time. Now, Goldberg got better over the course of time <clears throat> as far as his wrestling, but it never was like something extraordinary. Like uh, if you look, if you watch Goldberg versus Lord Steven Regal, a.k.a. William Regal, <clears throat> Regal was wrestling the crap out of Goldberg, like he was tying him up, doing all types of holds and stuff like that, and Goldberg couldn't do nothing with him. And that's kind of what they were trying to protect Goldberg for. You know what I mean? Because he had the look, the kids liked him and everything. He was like he was like Superman. So 
Well, he did lose. They, I don't think he lost, but he did try to spear Bret Hart. And Bret Hart had that thing in his chest and knocked Goldberg out. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, yeah. He put the uh, he put a plate, he put a plate in uh on on, on his chest, and when he speared him, it, uh, he knocked Goldberg out. I remember that. Yeah. Um, he's also Goldberg and him also had a, a not, not altercation, but Gold, Goldberg also had a blotch in that match where he kicked. Uh, Bret Hart, and he kicked him a little too hard, yeah. and he caused Bret Hart to retire early because of, a, I think, of a concussion or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And and at that time, they weren't as advanced as they are now, so you get a concussion back in those times, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to be pretty hard to recover. And he as did you can lose, see, Bret he Hart... Did lose, he did lose to Batista. Who? Who, Goldberg? Yeah. I think I know what match you're talking about. I think yeah, he did. Yeah, I think he did lose to Batista. I gotta look it up again, but I think I know what match you're talking about. Well, they fought. I think Batista won that fight, but that's yeah. a, that's my honorable mention. So go ahead with your next one. Okay, my uh, my number nine, my number nine guy is uh, who's thinking, thinking. My number nine guy is going to be Triple H. That's my number nine. Number nine. That's a good uh, pick. Triple H, decorated oh champion. God. Yeah, Triple H, decorated champion. He runs the WWE now with his wife. Um. Come on, like what? What didn't he do in professional wrestling? He won the title. I think he won the title like eleven times. Um, he's a former Intercontinental Champion, former WWE Champion, uh, former World Champion. Um, also, he helped run DX. Uh, he helped lead. He helped lead the Monday Night Roars. He came from WCW. A lot of people don't know that. He came from WCW. He was Blue John Blood. Paul Levesque Blue in Blood. WCW. Yeah, he's with the Blue Bloods. A lot of people don't know that. He was with Regal. His like, name was still he Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Triple H, though. Yeah. Yeah. So um he's a he's a decorated he's a decorated um wrestler, you know what I mean? What has yeah. he done in professional wrestling? So he's my um, number nine. My number, uh, so my number nine, so you, that was your number nine, right? So my number nine is Macho Man Randy Savage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Randy Savage, Elizabeth. You know what I'm saying? Randy Savage, the rapper. A lot of people didn't know Randy yeah, Savage was a rapper. <laughs> yeah, Randy he was actually all right, too. <laughs> He was yeah, the first yeah, wrestling he, rapper. Yeah, he had um, he had Fifty Cent on a track with him, or did a video with Fifty Cent. Did you yeah. know that? No, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, he had. A, I met Randy Savage. I met a, Randy Savage before. I met him and I met I met oh, a yeah. lot of wrestlers. Yeah, I met Randy Savage and I, I met uh, 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 I met The Rock before he was big. I met Randy Savage I, and I met. I, uh, I uh, uh, Superfly, Jimmy Snooker. Well, yeah, Superfly. He's still living in Akko. Yeah, he still living in Akko. Yeah, 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 I heard. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people used to run into Superfly. I never got a chance to run into him, but a lot of people used to run into Superfly all the time. Yeah. All right, that's a good pick. All right, so where we at? Number eight? Yeah. Okay, my number eight guy. <clears throat> number eight guy. Is uh, mankind? Mankind? Wow, Mick Foley, Cactus Jack. Mankind. All right, so I'm gonna tell you why it's mankind, right? So mankind has done everything in professional wrestling. This guy has a thirst hole for pain. 
this guy has also wrestled everybody under the sun and has held every single title under the sun. He has wrestled for every company under the sun. He's been in New Japan. He's been in WCW. When he was in WCW, he was known as Cactus Jack. When he was in ECW, he was known as Cactus Jack. When he came to WWE, that was his breakout uh, stardom. You know what I mean? He became Mankind. He won the WWE title. I believe he won the tag titles with the Rock and Sock Connection. Um, what else? Uh, he was I Dude mean, Love. What has he been? Dude Love as well. He was Dude Love. Um, he uh, he had that legendary match with Undertaker. Undertaker threw him off the cage. He uh, fell through the table and he lost his tooth. His tooth was in his ear. And all this other stuff, yo, yeah. the man is crazy. Yeah. You got to respect the guy that, that does, did what he did. He had a legendary match with Terry Funk. They had barbed wire matches. Like, the dude, thirst hole for pain is crazy. You got to respect that. And mankind is the truth. You know what I mean? He's number eight in my book. Yeah, so uh, number eight for me would be Triple H. I guess we said everything we need to say about him. So you can go ahead and go see your next one. Because he was, he was, we already said what we need to say about him. My number seven, my number seven guy is no one other than The Rock. The Rock? And I'm going to tell you, yeah, (laughs) The Rock. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Um, the Rock, to me, was like the modern was like the the modern day Hulk Hogan, mm-hmm. because he came in. He came first of all. He he's part of the biggest wrestling family in uh in sports entertainment. Um, Roman Reigns is his cousin. The Usos is his cousin. Solo Sokoa, that's his cousin. Anybody that's Samoan, basically, in WWE right now is his relatives. It's all facts. So he came from the biggest wrestling family in professional wrestling period. Um, He got his own TV show. He's a multi-time champion. And he can cut some of the best promos in the business, hands down. And you can see his influence throughout of wrestling everywhere. If you watch AEW, look at Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks looks like The Rock. And I know he's probably tired of hearing that, but I got to say, splitting image of what The Rock was doing when he first came in to WWE. Splitting image. His influence is everywhere, man. And there's a possibility we might see him in a wrestling ring real soon. So look out for that. The Rock. Rock is number seven. So my number seven is Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, my number seven. Right. You know Shawn Michaels. Right. You know the, the WWF champion, DX, coming in on the uh, on the thing, sliding on the rails, the heartbreak kid. You know what I'm saying, sexy boy. Super kick uh, off the top uh, rope elbow. You know what I'm saying? Put he put down some of the best of them. You know what I mean? Went best matches. Hell in the cell. Uh, what's that? Uh, the ladder match. All types of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shawn Michaels, my number mm-hmm. seven man. All right. So my number seven. What, what, where, where am I? At? Number six or number seven? You're number six. seven right now. You're at six. Okay. My Number six guy is no one other than Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Shawn Michaels. You just said you just said what every you just said what he do. You know what I mean? I don't need to repeat it. You know what I mean? He was yeah. he did his thing for so many years, so many memories. You know what I mean? Can't it, it can't it can't be compared. It can't be compared to what he has done in professional wrestling. You know what I mean? Straight straight up. So my number six, number six, Brett the Hitman Hart. <laughs> Brett Hart. I didn't know you was going to do that. 
Bret mm-hmm. Hart. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He was the one that, to me, that made catch- catchphrases cool. You know what I'm saying? Best right. there is, best there ever was, best there ever will be. He he could do it all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think Bret Hart, uh, he, I think he kind of got lost in time. You know what I'm saying? I think he kind of got lost in time. And I think that when he came, like, Bret Hart was, he he, he was the hitman. You know what I'm saying? When he came, people respected Bret Hart. He was the champion. People respected mm-hmm. him. But I think that his time, it came and went. But he still carried a lot of that respect as he went on in life. You know what I'm saying? And I just think that he he, to me, he had some of the best matches of all time. He put down some of the best people you never thought that they could be beat. He did some things mm-hmm. like, because he really couldn't, he really didn't know whether he, he wasn't a good guy. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't none of that. He just fought whoever, and that's what I liked about him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He didn't care who you was. Undertaker, he didn't care if you was Goldberg. He didn't care if you was Shawn Michaels. He didn't care who you was. He was about himself, and that's why I like Bret Hart. So I put Bret Hart there. Number six. Okay, that's what's up. Getting to your top five, Number man. five. Yeah, my top five. You know where I'm getting at, right? All right, so my number five guy, my number five guy is no one other than Chris Jericho. <laughs> I already said, I already said what I said. <laughs> and what I said, and I'm going to continue to say it. I'm going to continue to say it again. Oh he man! Used to, he used to reinvent himself every single so time. Chris Jericho's never he, he he reinvents himself every single time. He got moments too. I could go down the list, but the the list will be too long. So I'm gonna just say like maybe one or two. He wrestled mad people in New Japan for one. He was the IWGP. Uh, I think it was the uh, was he the heavyweight? Cha- no, he was the either the it was either the heavyweight champion or the intercontinental champion or the U.S. champion. One of them titles that he had the IW the IWGP belt, but he held it, and not a lot of wrestlers hold that belt. So if you were an American wrestler and you holding the IWGP belt, that means New Japan holds you in high regard because not too many guys hold that belt. But there's a few guys that you might think haven't held that belt that they have held that belt, and I'm gonna break that down later. But yeah, Chris Jericho, my number five. All right, man. My number five. If you smell what the Rock is cooking, number five. <laughs> the Rock, <laughs> greatest wrestler, greatest greatest entertainer of all time. Some of the best matches ever. Classic. He, him and Stone Cold kept Monday Night Wars interesting because at the time when WCW was dominating, we had to flip back and forth because we didn't know what The Rock was going to do or what Stone Cold was going to do. They held that company on their back. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really did. Like, The Rock and Stone Cold was, was the truth, so... The Rock, man, even though I think he got robbed a lot of matches, like a lot of world title matches, he got robbed. And he battled, he fought like Triple H. Like, he has, I think he has the most, most title shots, but the most losses when it comes to the title shot. Like, like, he lost the most out of all of them. Stone Cold. Yeah. I Triple H. A uh, bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't like when they had him lose to Brock Lesnar. I, I wasn't. That was corny. That. He lost. That was. I didn't corny. like when he lost to Brock. Yeah. That's corny. I think. But, I think. I, I mean, you know. I think. We'll get into Brock Lesnar uh, another time. But. Yeah. So. There you have it. Your number four. So that was your. That was your number four. Number oh. five. That was my number five. Number five, okay, my number four, number four is no one other than Stone Cold Steve Austin. What we talking about, the rattlesnake? What? Come on now, like, he the, who, who, 
who doesn't like Stone Cold Steve Austin? What hasn't he done in the wrestling business? We're talking about somebody who wrestled in WCW. He wrestled in ECW, came to WWE, became the ringmaster, was with Million Dollar Man, held the Million Dollar Belt, and then had a legendary match with Jake the Snake Roberts, which had retired him in the King of the Ring. And then the legendary catchphrase says, Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. If anybody remembers that that quote he had, he said, he what he said, uh, he said, everybody talks Psalm 316 or whatever like that. How about Austin 316? Something like that. I'm, yeah. I kind of botched it up a little bit, but... Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He's the man. He's the man. He, what hasn't he done? You know what I'm saying? So, so Austin, number four. My number four is also to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, he did things that I think that he was just, to me, Stone Cold Steve Austin was a different version of Ace Cowboy Bob Orton and Bad News and Roddy Roddy Piper. He was just all of those per- people in one person. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He didn't take no shit. And again, he was kind of like Bret Hart, even though he fought before too. He was kind of like Bret Hart. But Bret Hart was a hitman mm-hmm. and you had Stone Cold was kind of like awful himself. You know what I'm saying? He didn't care who you was. He was just nope. by himself. Stone Cold Steve mm-hmm. Austin made a reputation for himself, whereas he is like that in real life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing about him. And when he had got power drive by uh, on Hart, he almost broke his neck. I think he did break his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he stopped wrestling for a little while after that, even though they still gave yeah, him did. the match. Like, he did. They, he still won the match, I think. But... Um, he had that, that injury that was a really bad injury. Um, with that that power drive really messed him up really bad. Um, mm-hmm. he he is like that in real in real life. Like if you, I, I follow him on on YouTube, Austin three sixteen or, or, or something on Stone Cold something. He got a podcast. He interviewed wrestlers and stuff yeah. like that. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. No, it's real. But he it. that's how he is in real life. I met him before too. So cool. Yeah. So he's my number four. Okay. My number three. Getting into that uh three. My number three guy is no one other. And y'all can laugh if y'all want. But this guy <laughs> has transcended I'm the business. I'm ready. He <laughs> Attended the business, and he 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 def, like on the real on the real like because I've heard stuff on the real. He really is a genuine person, you know what I'm saying? Like he really wants wrestling to evolve. Now my only gripe with him is that he never became a heel. And if you know where I'm going with this, I'm no other than John Cena. John Cena. Uh, that's my John only Cena? gripe with him. He never. Bro, what hasn't he done, bro? What hasn't he done, bro? And this ain't, and, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying, and the only reason why, like, and the only reason why I haven't, I haven't put the other three, the other three in there yet is because for, well, because for one, we're just talking wrestling, you know what I mean, as far as who was better than who. Mm-hmm. I wasn't talking about moments, and then, and then the other thing is that, First of all, AJ Styles hasn't retired yet, so he's still creating his own moments. Eddie Guerrero passed away too soon. You know what I'm saying? And Chris Jericho is still active as well. So they're still creating moments. So I still have time to add an AJ Styles in that in, in that talk, in that uh, Hall of Fame top 10. You know what I'm saying? He's still got time to bump somebody out sooner or later. You know what I mean? Because he's still doing his thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, John Cena, man, like he's a multi-time champion too. He's won the champion championship like what was it, 11, 12 times, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he's who hasn't he wrestled? He's beat the who's who of professional wrestling. He made it 
he made it cool. He made it cool, like even though he's a he's a uh, he's a white guy, he made it cool to uh, to be to be like hip hop in professional wrestling because we had people that did it before him, and it looked it crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not even talking about. I, I, I'm talking. I'm not even talking about nobody in particular, but it looked crazy. But when he did it, him being who he was, it looked cool. It looked cool. You know what I'm saying? Like he made it kind of cool, throwing the jerseys on with the backwards hat. And we know he looked it silly. We know he looked funny. But then you know what I'm saying? Like when he when 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 he started to evolve into more of his character and more of his role, we started seeing a different phases of him until he got into that hustle, loyalty, and respect phase and he kind of like left the other stuff alone. Yeah. But yeah, man, John Zena is the, John Zena's the man, man. He's my number three. My number three is The Undertaker. Undertaker. One of the greatest of all time. 21 WWE uh, WrestleMania title defenses or WrestleMania streaks. Big mm-hmm. man did things that I don't think no wrestler could ever do. Some of the greatest matches of all time, most memorable. Remember when he came from under the ring, pulled what's name down into the ring. Undertaker yep. to me, legendary. Can't walk yep. in the rooms and, and see him. Like everybody respects him. And 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 he is one of those type of people where I think he had a problem with uh, I think it was Brock Lesnar or Goldberg. One of them he had a problem with personally. And I think it was Goldberg. And he went to him. And was like, listen, we could really fight. Like, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no wrestling. We could, we could knuckle up. And he was in the crowd. Wasn't like, nah, I'm coming. To, I, I wasn't invited. I'm coming to see your match, and I'm just letting you know you got a problem with me. He sat right with the people. I think I remember that too. I remember that too. I can't remember what exact what match exactly was that Goldberg was wrestling, but I do remember something like that happening. They had real tension between each other, but it it it, it had nothing it had nothing to do with Taker. I think, like I told you, and this is nothing against Goldberg. Goldberg is still. You know what I'm saying? Who he is. You know, his legacy is solidified. But I just feel like he should, like, when you have a legacy like he is, you don't need to come back and wrestle a few more matches. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like he came back. They got the little nostalgic value. He wrestled Brock Lesnar, beat Brock Lesnar. But then they started to draw it out even more and more and more and more. And he wrestled Taker, and he almost hurt Undertaker. So that's, I think, that's where a lot of that beef, a lot he of that wrestled beef Brock came Lesnar from. twice, and he lost the second time. Yeah, he lost the second one. He beat him. The first two times he beat him, you know, he wrestled him three times. The first time, he was the world champion in WWE, and he beat Brock Lesnar and retained his title. That was the match where he gorilla like. He threw Brock Lesnar up in the air. This is why I said this man was like Superman, bro. Look the match. He threw him in the air, bro. Like, I'm saying, like, he had this man. He swung him to the ropes and then picked him up and launched him in the air, caught him on his back, and then uh, Samoan dropped him, bro. Or Gorilla Press slammed him. One of the two, bro. Yeah. Like, look it up, bro. And he retained the title. Then he wrestled him the other time when he was older, and the match only lasted like three minutes. He beat him in like three, some maybe a little bit shorter than that, but he beat him, and he became the undisputed champion. And then the next time they wrestled, you know, Brock Lesnar just destroyed him the, the, the next time they wrestled after that. But you knew that was coming, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, man, now, you know, the Undertaker. Uh, what's your number? Your number two. My number two is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Now we talking about somebody 
that basically all of us grew up on. The wrestlers that we mentioned, at least half of them grew up on Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, what? Hulk Hogan was one of the first guys, if not the first guy, but one of the first guys to be in a movie about professional wrestlers and make that shit banging. Everybody remembers No Holds Bar. No Holds Bar was the truth. Now, the movies that he had after that, I wasn't really feeling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, the Bourbon Commando. All, nah, them joints, was, them joints was, was type trash. I'm not even going to front. Sorry, Hogan. The movies was not well, that Hulk good. Hulk Hogan was in Rocky too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was another one. Uh, he played Thunder Lips. That was, that, that was cool. You he know was a wrestler saying? in Rocky Hogan. too. Yeah, he played, he played, uh, he actually played the gimmick. Well, he didn't play, nah, he didn't, he wasn't no Thunderlips outside of Derby, nah. But he, that was the persona of his gimmick before he became Hulk Hogan. It was like, that was a similar, yeah. similar type of uh, character. But yeah, Hulk Hogan's my number two. I mean, we already know how many titles he won. We already know he's part of NWO. He started it, blocked. We already, we ain't even got to go that far. We already yeah. know. So, so, my, number so my number two, well, my number two is Ric Flair. Nature Boy. Oh. Ric Flair, uh, okay. Four Horsemen. Uh, Ric Flair, even in his old age, still was doing stuff with young wrestlers. Right. Nature Boy. You know what I'm saying? He's another he's another wrestler that lives his persona. That's who he is in real life. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's who he is. There's no there's no You know what I'm saying? This guy he he remind me of a mob boss wrestler. I don't know why. Hmm. <laughs> But he did he remind me of a mob boss who, who came off the stoop and was like, oh, you want to fight? All right, let's fight. Like, Ric Flair was that guy, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I remember when he first came to WW, WWF, it was a big deal. Because yeah. it's like, I think he was still contracted to WCW. And he, he came to WWF. And he I think that that was... Champion. Yeah, he was the champion. And that was amazing that he did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that that was amazing at that time. So I, I put him, he was he was always he was always in my top. Never came out of my top. Always. I never swayed. Always. So I put Ric Flair in number two. Okay. Well, you already know what my number one is. I think we had discussed this before. My number one is Ric Flair. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Uh, we are, you already mentioned his accolades. He's he's a 16-time world champion. Who you know won the title 16 times? I mean, like, come on. Like, 16-time world champion, um, four horsemen. You know what I mean? He was, he was with Evolution as well, which was like a you know what I mean? A, a break off version of the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Uh, what hasn't he done? What hasn't he done in this sport? Period. Like Ric Flair was really Ric Flair was the guy that is, was invited to the cookout. Ric Flair was the guy that invited. To, you can write. You can invite Ric Flair to the cookout, and he'll get yeah. that joint lit. Yeah. Not to mention, not, not to mention, bro. Like the dude did has a song with the Amigos. Come on, bro. <laughs> like Ric Flair was lit, the yeah. time, bro. Like, yeah. like Ric Flair was the man, bro. Like he's my Rick number Flair. one guy. Yeah. So my number one wrestler of all time, he is wrestling. Always will be wrestling, no matter what happens. I don't care. It's Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is professional wrestling. Hulk Hogan was people's hero. When you talk about Superman, no, Hulk Hogan was actually Superman. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was literally Superman. He had his theme song is to this day, 
it's still like people can play that and you think of Hulk Hogan. When it comes crashing down and it hurts, he was the hope that you had. <laughs> you know, I, mean? I swear to you, I'm not making this up. I never really cried in my life. Few times I ever cried in my life. Maybe one time I got a beaten. And when Hulk Hogan fought uh, uh, Ultimate Warrior and he lost, I cried. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? I cried. Even though I was a big Ultimate Warrior fan, I think that that match to me may be the greatest match of all time. That might be like, you know, you have matches that is like number one. And we got to do a topic on that one day too. Uh, What's the best wrestling matches of all time? Uh, top your top five or whatever, but that's probably number one by far. I don't think any. Uh, I think the tension and the the and the thing about Hulk Hogan, his matches. He has some of the most iconic matches that probably you probably would never ever reach ever again. Him mm-hmm. and him and um him and uh, Unde- um, Undertaker. Him and uh, um Yokozuna. Him and uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Andre the Giant. Uh, Andre the Giant. Him and Kamala. <laughs> him and uh, mm-hmm. him and uh, um, um, King Kong Bundy. Him and uh, uh mm-hmm. who else? Shawn Michaels. <laughs> him mm-hmm. and um, um, Zeus. Him and um, mm-hmm. um, what's the boy name? Uh, Ultimate Warrior. His matches, you know, his Rick matches, too, uh, yeah, yeah Rick Flair. Rick Flair. Goldberg. His name, even though he lost, but that was in his later mm-hmm. years. But he, Hulk Hogan, to me, I always go back and forth between him and Ric Flair. But the reason why I always give Hulk Hogan a nod is because Hogan is, when he walks in the room, he's like God. To wrestlers. When he walks in the room, him and Ric Flair is maybe on the same level, but when Hogan comes in that room, 24 inch pipe dons, like he was that guy. He was yeah. he was wrestling at one point. It was no he held the belt for five years straight. Five years. You know, you know, you know he wrestled in New, in New Japan as well. He's the uh He's a former. He's a Hulk Hogan's a former IWGP champion too. And uh, not to cut you off, but I just want to put a disclaimer in there with uh, with Hulk Hogan. Uh, I just want to put a disclaimer in there. Hulk Hogan is also one of the few American guys that has held that IWGP belt. Hulk Hogan is also one of the very few guys that has wrestled Great Muda. Hulk Hogan is also one of those guys too. That can actually, that can actually wrestle. That can actually wrestle. A lot of people think he can't wrestle. No, Hulk Hogan could put on a wrestling clinic. It was WWE, WWF that didn't want him doing all that when he came to the World Wrestling Federation. They didn't want him doing the drop toe holds, the drop kicks, the submission maneuvers, the uh, whatever. They didn't want him doing all that because they felt like he was too big of a guy to be doing it, but he was actually pretty athletic. And and I got I gotta speak the I gotta speak the real. Like Hulk Hogan could really, really wrestle, right? Mm-hmm. Doing some real stuff. You look up the match between him and Great Moody, you see for himself, for yourself. And whenever Hulk Hogan wrestled in in New Japan, it was always like he was able to be himself. And then when he had the interview, which is on my TikTok, if you go to Battle Rap Wrestling Media TikTok, you go scroll to the bottom, you will see the interview with Hulk Hogan. He had the WWF title on one side, and he said something about the IWGP title. This is just before he won the IWGP title. He said something about the title. He said the IWGP title is a better title than the WWF title. We he said. So... Like what else can we say about Hulk Hogan, man? He's done it all. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I know, I know he had a few, I know he had a few scandals and whatever like that, or situations, you know what I mean, that made people like not really like him like that. 
But we're not talking about him outside outside of uh, his wrestling career. We're talking about his wrestling career itself. Now, what he did outside of that, that's his business. You know what I'm saying? But as a professional wrestler, he was the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think Hulk Hogan, uh, to me... He he was he was he was at one point where he was he was bigger than wrestling. He was like he was like Jay Z when it come to hip hop. He was like Eminem when it come to hip hop. He was bigger than the actual art itself. And I think, and I think when Vince got rid of him at the time, it kind of damaged wrestling. But when it comes to wrestling, people got to understand it's the same thing with boxing, the same thing with UFC. Can't always, uh, how would I say this? Good things come to an end. And I think that that's what made WWE or WWF back then so great. Because Vince was willing to take those chances. Because you can't always have the same person winning all the time. You know what I'm saying? And Hogan came in when he lost to Ultimate Warrior. That was the end of, that was the end of Hogan's. I would say rain because now you got somebody who came in who's just as popular as you and probably people love the same way they love you. You know what I'm saying? Now that's not taking that away from Hogan's accomplishments. Cause he obviously was much bigger still. Even after that, he did the NWO and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I think that, um, Hogan had that. When you talk about reinventing himself, he went from the blonde hair to the black hair with the black beard and blonde and black and all that stuff. When he did that, he was almost scary. When NWO came, Hulk Hogan came, it was scary when he joined the NWO. It was scary. It was kind of like how it was when him and... He gave me that feel when him and Ultimate Warrior fought. When he became NWO. It gave me that same feel like, oh man, this is crazy. And I think that that's what... That's why... He's number one because he fought everybody, every wrestler that you could name of, Hogan fought him. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Every one it's of true. them. He fought all of them. He, fought, he wrestled all the guys that we have on the list. He wrestled yeah. every single one of them. All every all one of them. Guys he wrestled. Yep. yep. Whether he won or lost, he wrestled everybody. Every yep. one of them. True. You know what I'm saying? So that's my what's the name? That's my uh that's my list. And I and I'll be honest with you, I don't think that no one probably would ever surpass him because and it's not their fault because wrestling is not the same. So the sport is different, the entertainment is different, the value of it is different. See back then wrestling was competing with, even though I think it still is, like Vince. I don't know about now, but it was competing with boxing and all that. Because boxing only happened few, 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 few far in between. Wrestling happened every week. So wrestling was always bigger because every weekend, they're filling arenas. Every weekend. Mm-hmm. So I believe that that's what happened with wrestling. So. But yeah, man. Combat Combo, we're going to come back with another episode. 